Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our 52nd Minx Monday Q&A. Oh my goodness. Can you believe that I've been doing this for a year? So my question to you guys is, should I keep doing it or should I stop at the one year mark? Uh, I'd love to hear your comments down below. I, I think there's, these are some of my favorite videos, uh, but I know that, you know, I don't want to bore you guys. So let me know in the description box below. But while you guys are thinking about that, let's get started with the very first question. Uh, and I'm sure I'm going to get lipstick all over my teeth because I've been, I started to use this lip color and I just, I know that at the end of the video, I'm going to have lipstick right up here. So don't make fun, <laughs> but I have a feeling. Uh, okay. So let's get started from sushi lover, 1990. Hi, do you know if I can authenticate a Chanel bag at a Chanel boutique or do they not offer this kind of service? Same for LV. Uh, no, they do not. Um, and a lot of these, um, there's, there's a way around it kind of, but the sales associates have been uh, taught to figure out when someone's trying to get something authenticated. Uh, but usually what would happen is um, if you really need to get a repair done on your Chanel bag or your Louis Vuitton bag, the best way to do that is to obviously take it into the Louis Vuitton store. And if it's not authentic, they will actually turn it away and say, you know what, this is not our product or you know what, we cannot work on this. Uh, and that will kind of give you, uh, that will let you know that it is a, in fact, a replica and not an authentic piece. Uh, but like I said, a lot of these sales associates have had some people trying to uh, come in there and saying, oh, I've, I'm thinking about getting this repair. How much would it be? Or, you know, so if the sales associate looks at you a little funky, if you're going in there solely to see if it's authentic or not, uh, they might... Um, I have heard some sales associates actually say, you know what, I don't have our, ex we don't have our, what was it, our repair expert here or something like that, kind of to not answer the question. So um, just be careful on that. But no, they do not offer that service. Um, they will just turn the item away and say that they can't repair it. Uh, but even if you go in there, if someone ever tells you, you know what, I got it authenticated at the Chanel boutique that that does not happen. They do not offer that service because uh, the the reason why they don't do that is because if you go in there and you say, "Oh, is this real or not?" How do they know? How do they not know? How do they know that you're not uh, someone that's trying to replicate the bag? So by them telling you what's wrong with it, then that. Um, that and that would enable someone to be able to pinpoint what they can fix to make it look authentic. So that's why they don't offer that service. Uh, okay, Pink to Paris. My very good friend Brooke. She also has a YouTube channel. Love her. You guys think I love pink? She loves pink and she rocks it. Uh, okay, my anniversary is next month and I want to get a Demi Ben bag to celebrate. Very nice. Uh, congratulations. Uh, I love my monogram Neverfull MM, but I'm thinking about the delightful for some variety. Do you have any thoughts? on this bag. Uh, I love the delightful. I actually prefer the older version of the delightful, uh, just because at, I think if I'm not mistaken, they said that they, um, that the strap on the new one is a little bit is a little bit shorter, the shoulder strap, but between, um, just the delightful in general, I love that bag. Uh, I've even thought about, I keep going back and forth. I tell you guys, I'm not going to get it. And then I think I want to get it because it is such a lightweight bag. Uh, the reason why it's called delightful is because it is a delight to use, uh, from what one of the sales associates told me. And I just like the fact that it's a, it's a hobo, it's a shoulder bag. You can just get in there, get out, and um, it's not too heavy. And the shoulder strap is perfect because it doesn't dig into your shoulders. So I think it's a great bag. I think that uh, would be a great addition to your collection. And once again, congratulations <laughs> on your soon-to-be anniversary. I was going to say happy birthday. <laughs> uh, okay, Vanel Cotlong. If you could only pick one, which one would you choose? The Neverfull or the Artsy? Well, as much as I love the Artsy and I appreciate the beauty that is the Artsy, I can never turn away a Neverfull. I, again, it's, um, I've talked about the Neverfull so much, the simple design, the fact that I can get in and get out. There's no, um, there's no, there's not a bunch of pockets everywhere. It's, it's just the perfect amount of vaquetta or perfect amount of coated, uh, of coated leather. And I just, I love that bag. I like the silhouette cause it's simple. It's just a simple tote and I'm a tote girl uh, or hobo girl. So, uh, I'd have to be the Neverfull as much as I like the artsy, but Never, never full for sure. Uh, okay. Lied to me 101. Nice name. 
<laughs> I like it. Uh, so I'm in love with the Louis Vuitton Capucine bag in the beige color. I don't want to baby my bags. They are meant for use and with a price tag like the Capucine has, I would, I should be able to use the bag every day. I agree. Uh, but here in Finland, the weather is, is rainy in the fall and it snows in the winter. Do you think that the water slash snow could damage the leather and the bag, especially as this is a lighter color. Um, I think from the, the leather that the Capucine uses is actually very, very durable. Uh, I I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to tell you with certainty that nothing's going to happen to the lighter color because obviously lighter colors are always a little bit more, you know, um, a little bit more iffy. Um, but again, like I said before, I've read up on the leather and they've said that it's, it's one of the best leathers out there, obviously, because it has a huge price tag because you're also paying not only for the name brand, but you're getting the quality of the leather. So I think you'd be okay, but I would still recommend, um, maybe reading up on it a little bit more or even talking to your local sales associate and seeing what their thoughts are. A lot of people are probably going to tell you to go with a darker color. Uh, that way you don't see anything. But then again, with the darker color, if you do get, um, if you do get scratches, it might be easier to see. So I think the lighter color, uh, would hide a little bit more. So regardless, I would still talk to your sales associate and see what they uh, recommend. Um, because I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to guide you in the wrong direction. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, eight kitty lover. What piece do you feel you need to complete your collection? Ooh, this is a good question. Um, for my Chanel collection, the last piece that or what piece do I need to collect? I, I would really like to add a mini flap to my collection, um, for the Chanel. And then after that, I think that pretty much I, I wouldn't, there's nothing really out there. I mean, I would always want to add like another boy bag and a different color and different leather, but for the most part, it would be a mini flap. And as far as my Louis Vuitton collection goes, um, I can't think of anything that I know I'm going to, that I know I would get anytime soon. I can't really think of anything. Mm -mm. I'd say, I mean, I, I'd always want like a train case cause I think they're super, super cute, but realistically I would probably never use it cause I wouldn't want anything to happen to it. <laughs> so it's kind of stupid <laughs> for me to say that. Uh, but I uh, know I can't think of anything. So I don't have anything on my current wish list. Mm -mm. Uh, I'm very, very happy with uh, my collection. Uh, okay, Milan, my question. I have bought several Louis Vuitton items online and in the boutique. I have never got a card with item name, description, and the barcode, but every time I watch an unboxing or a reveal, people show those cards as proof of authenticity. So any ideas on why I never get them? Uh, okay, so first things first, Louis Vuitton does not come with authenticity cards whatsoever. Uh, and these are the ones that you're talking about. I just grabbed, uh, I just had a few, you know, little ones here and there. Uh, this is the one, right? Something like that. And you get the care or the uh, textile card. Uh, the textile, textile card will always come with it. Uh, there might be some times when they don't because, um, you know, if the sales associate just has, uh, I don't know if they, if they have a brain fart, then they won't have it. But as far as the barcode ones, uh, I remember I asked one of my sales associates a long time ago and they said that they keep these. They're supposed to keep that. They're trying, they try to keep these. I'm sorry. And, uh, usually when you go into boutique, you'll see that the dust bags actually have a barcode as well. And those barcodes actually have the price tag. They're supposed to take off that barcode with the price tag and keep this, um, so that it matches together. But I mean, I've gotten these half the time, half the time. I don't get any of them. I just get the textile card. Uh, but it, it doesn't really, I mean, it depends. Like I said, some sales associates say, no, we're supposed to keep them. And other ones are like, oh, they completely forget when they, when they box up the bag. Uh, but it is not a proof of authenticity. Uh, as I said before, because they're, they don't have authenticity cards. I really wish they did kind of like Chanel. I think it would be, uh, it would make selling a little bit easier. So people don't feel like they're getting, um, they're getting a fake, a fake item. You know what I mean? Um, but no, I really wish they always, they always included them. Like I said, I've gotten them half the time, half the time I haven't. So it's really, it's not a big deal. Um, and this, this SKU number right here that you see actually will always match what you're purchasing and it'll be on your receipt. So as long as you have the receipt, really you're golden. You don't really need this. Uh, okay. Next question. Mm, Sansu 
Appen. I'm so sorry. Uh, would you share your bag charms with us? Maybe a video with charms on some of your LV bags. I would love, I would like, I would like an LV bag charm, but I can't decide on which one to get. Uh, for those of you that have been watching me for a while, you guys know I do not uh, have any bag charms. I can appreciate them. I think they look absolutely gorgeous on other bags, but for me, I don't prefer them. Uh, as far The farthest I'll go for a bag charm is actually, let me show you guys. This is my Keep All 45 that's what I'll go with a bag charm is a uh, luggage tag. That's the closest thing that I will get to one. Uh, I, I usually do that for two reasons. Number one, I don't like the fact that the bag charms have um, the hardware that might end up... I, I'm, I'm a freak sometimes, <laughs> so let me explain. I don't like the fact that the hardware might rub on whatever hardware I'm putting it on. So if, uh, you know, if you have tabs on a speedy and the three tabs are, are going to look great, but that one that has the rubbing up against the other bag charm, I think it'll, it might wear a little bit faster. That's just me. Like I said, I've seen a lot of people with their bag charms and their bags still look great, but that's just one of my pet peeves. Uh, and another thing is uh, until recently I was carrying a bandeau on my Louis Vuitton speedy 30 Demi Azor. And I, I thought I really wanted to have the bandeau over it, you know, in a little ribbon and have it look all cute, but I really don't, I, I started to realize I don't like the way that it looks on there. Um, as I said before, I like how it looks on, you know, how people dress up their bags. But for me personally, it's not something that I like. I don't want to add too much stuff to the bag already. Uh, the bag in itself is an accessory and I don't want to have to keep adding a bandeau and a bag charm. And this, this is not a knock against anyone who has bag charms by any means whatsoever and who appreciates them. I am just not a big fan of them. Um, and I think they're actually, they're freaking expensive <laughs> for adding just another piece to a bag. I think they're a little pricey, but I, like I said, I've seen some beautiful pieces out there. I can appreciate them, but they're just not for me. So I, I don't think I'll ever get a back charm. No, <laughs> I thought about the, is it the Tapage charm from Louis Vuitton? That's the one I absolutely love. I love it. I think it looks fantastic, but I know I would never use it. So, um, I would pass on it. Plus they get all scratched up and I would be so I think I would be so anal as to how it, how it looks. I don't want any scratches on it. All right. So next question. Um, many Liao, what do you think about the Celine trio bag? Uh, I love the Celine trio bag. I always forget how much it is. I think it's like 2100, right? If I'm not mistaken, I, I'm sorry. I don't remember. Uh, but anyways, what I like about the Celine trio bag is the fact that it is a very versatile bag that comes with compartments. So if you are the type of person that needs to be hands-free, it has a longer crossbody strap and it has those compartments. The compartments kind of remind me of two different bags. They remind me of the Louis Vuitton, uh, Pouchette Matisse because it has that accordion style, um, compartment or compartments. And it also reminds me of the twin set as far as how long it is. I think it's great. And it comes in these beautiful, beautiful pops of color. Uh, personally, I wish it was a little bit shorter and it had a fatter um, shoulder strap so I can use it as a shoulder bag, not as a crossbody bag, but I can definitely appreciate it. And I think, uh, again, for anyone that wants to venture out into a different brand and you have to be hands-free and you like organization for your bags, I think that the Celine Trio is a great, great way to go. Uh, okay. Next question, uh, Rose Elena, I've got my eye on the St. Laurent small cabas Reeve Gouche bag in black. What are your thoughts slash opinions? Uh, the St. Laurent cabas uh, Reeve Gouche reminds me, it's so funny because every time I walk into Neiman's, I think the exact same thing when I see it because I always walk by that in order to get to Chanel or to Louis Vuitton. Um, I always think of the same thing copycat or want to be Birkin. I'm sorry. This is what I say. Want to be Birkin. Uh, it has the same, it's a very, it's a very simple design. It has a great silhouette. It does remind me of a Birkin without it having, if a Birkin was to be open without the little flap on top, that's what, ex that's exactly what it reminds me of. Uh, and I do appreciate the leather and I do appreciate the fashion house. However, I do feel that they're also trying a little too hard to make it look like a Birkin. Um, that's just me. Again, this is not a knock against anyone who has this bag, but, um, I, I always appreciate, um, 
originality with a fashion house. I, I prefer fashion houses that don't try to look like another uh, brand and just be a little bit cheaper. Uh, it obviously happens with the contemporary style bags, but it also happens with the higher end uh, labels. So uh, for me, like I said, 50% of me says it's a great bag and it's a great investment piece. And 50% of me thinks that it's trying too hard to look like something else. Um, but I'm, I'm on the fence about it. Uh, okay, Mar Maricela Gomez, what is your favorite vintage Louis Vuitton piece uh, and why? Uh, definitely, hands down, the piece that I am most in love with and I would love to add to my collection is a steamer trunk. So the previous question, what piece am I missing? I'm missing a steamer trunk. Um, I just love the fact that the steamer trunk is what put Louis Vuitton on the map. They started with... Um, with travel goods and, and steamer trunks and all that other good stuff. And I just think that the fact that this brand has been around for such a long time speaks volumes of it. Yes, they do have their problems here and there as far as quality goes, but for the most part, they've been around for a very long time. So they have been doing something right. And to be able to have a piece that started the, the fashion house would be the ultimate piece to my collection in my in my opinion I think it would be a great conversation piece I would like to use it as a coffee table or a decorative piece whatever it is but I would love to add one to my collection um and obviously to have and some of them are, are some of them are beat up for the most part and some of them still look really really good but the fact that some of them are a hundred years old and they still look I mean they don't, some of them, like, like I said before, they're a little bit weathered, but the fact that they're a hundred years old and they are still functional, that again speaks volumes of the company and the quality that they have to, to offer people. So steamer trunk for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Deborah Gagliato. I love your Alma and Vernie, your Alma's and Vernie, but if I'm not mistaken, the colors have been discontinued. Uh, if you would buy the Alma today, which color would you choose and why? Uh, and I actually looked them up before I did this video and the, I have two Almas in Vernie. I have the Cerise, which is the cherry and the Noir Magnetic and the Noir Magnetic is still, both of them are still available. Uh, the Noir Magnetic, um, once upon a time, the sales associate told me that it was going to be a limited edition color. Pfft two years later, it's still around. <laughs> um, and they also have a noir, but the noir has gold hardware versus the noir magnetic has the gunmetal hardware. Um, but if I was to buy an Alma today, um, <laughs> it would definitely be. And the reason I'm laughing is because when I bought my Cerise, I fell in love with it because I love the, the pop of color, the red that it has. But the next week I went into Louis Vuitton and I saw their new collection or the new, their, their new bags. And I I absolutely fell head over heels for none other than Griot. Griot is a, the, oh my goodness, it is this beautiful wine burgundy color. Oh, it is to die for. I think it is one of the best looking colors that Louis Vuitton has come out with, uh, with Vernie. Why I haven't added it to my collection, I don't know. Maybe it's because I already have, I have a total of three Almas, so I don't need another one. But that color is just, oh. I seriously could not stop drooling. And if you go online, if you check out the, the color, I am telling you right now, the color online does not do it justice. It is just a beautiful, beautiful color. And I think it would be great for fall and winter. <sighs> Maybe I should buy something of that color because I like it so much. Maybe I'll buy a wallet. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Robin Russell, do you like the Hermes Evelyn? What are your thoughts on the bag? Major shout out to uh, BJ Taylor who just got this bag. Uh, but I, I, I'm also on the fence about the Evelyn. Uh, actually, hmm, let's see. I, I think it's a great bag. I think, again, it's very simple. I like the simple designs. The leather on these, on this bag is insanely, insanely beautiful. Uh, and I like the fact that it has a microfiber lining. I like the GM because it's obviously the bigger one. I, I, I think I saw a lady one time carrying it as a shoulder bag and it seemed like it was a little bit wider. So it looked like a hobo. I don't know if that's a different one, but I wish the only thing I wish is that it was, it was shorter. If it was a little bit shorter, I think it would be perfect for me. But for the most part, 
I'm not on the fence. I think it is a beautiful bag because of the simplicity and just that leather is out of this world. Uh, so I don't know. I'm, I, I keep, when I first saw it, I didn't like it, especially the smaller one. I think the smaller one is way too small, but the GM one is just to die for. So like I said, but when I first saw it, I was like, Ooh, this is not, this is not for me. But the more and more I see it and the range in colors that it comes in. Oh, beautiful. Uh, okay. And Maxine Seeley. Do the keys unlock all of the LV bags or is it just for that bag only? This is a great, great question. Uh, so I have a little set right here. And as you can see on the bottom, mine says 322. And the key says 322. So when it comes to Louis Vuitton locks, um, the key, the key, the key has to match the bottom number of the lock. So this one has a number and this one has a number. It has to match. Now it's not only, there's only, there's not only one bag that's three, two, two. Um, it will open up any lock that has the same number three, two, two. But if you're trying to put in an, in another lock that has another number, it will not work. Uh, so that is pretty cool. And sometimes, uh, if you lose either part, you can always go to Louis Vuitton and some sales associates are super nice and they'll give you a brand new lock or they'll just give you the key that, uh, or whatever part you're missing. So if you're missing the lock, they'll give you another lock. Um, and you have the keys, let's say 307, they'll give you, they'll try to find you a lock with 307, uh, or vice versa for the keys. But for the most part, it's, um, half of them will try to charge you for, I think they're $25 if I'm not mistaken, or $35 for a brand new lock and key set. Uh, but some sales associates, as I said before, will be super, super nice and just give you a brand new one. But no, it's kind of cool. The fact that not every key can open any speedy, it has to be to that specific lock. Uh, so I think that's pretty awesome. I love that. And, um, uh, I think, I don't know. I, I love, I wish I could have a bunch of locks. I don't know why. Are you guys like that? I just think that they're so freaking cute, especially the older ones that say Louis Vuitton Paris made in France. Now they don't say that half of them say that and half of them don't. Oh, just Louis Vuitton stick to one. <laughs> um, okay. And I think that does it. I think that does it for, uh, for our questions, you guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And again, let me know if, if you want me to continue with Minx Monday. Give me your questions down below. Again, I sometimes I have to answer them online because there is not enough time. I wish I could do like a one-hour segment. How cool would that be? And I wish I could have like a, like a, a person... What's it called? A, uh, a guest of the day or something like that. That would be so freaking cool. <laughs> but, um, and I actually, there is one more thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, last week I talked about how, um, I don't get judgment. I don't get preferential treatment when I carry my Louis Vuittons. And the more and more I thought about it, I will have to take back some of that, um, uh, because I have noticed that I do get a little bit better treatment when I do carry my Chanel's. And, uh, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because this kind of hit a nerve with a few of you and a few of you have, uh, told me that, you know, sometimes you get judged on, uh, not, not necessarily the bag, but on how you look. And I, I just thought I would come on here again and talk about it a little bit more in depth. Um, and give you guys a little bit more of an example. So even though um, I don't get preferential treatment with my Louis Vuittons, I do get some on my Chanel's, but there's something that I wanted to share with you guys that absolutely drives me crazy. And if I use a little bit more of explicit um, language, I apologize, but it's just such a pet peeve of mine and I do not like it. So uh, there's a few times when my hubby and I will go shopping and uh, whether I'm on my phone finishing up an email or something, sometimes he'll go into the store ahead of me. Uh, and we've, we've gone into uh, higher end stores and when he walks in, I am probably a few steps behind him. And when he walks in, the sales associates don't acknowledge him, don't say hello. I mean, come on, really, hello? It's common decency just to say hello when someone walks in. And they don't say hello, they don't acknowledge him, and um, they judge him based on the fact that my hubby has sleeves of tattoos. And... Um, he, he has quite a bit of tattoos and my husband is a great dresser in my opinion. Uh, he, I mean, 
so the, what I'm trying to say is I don't like the fact that they judge him based on his tattoos. Tattoos are so mainstream now that you see them everywhere. And uh, my husband, uh, I mean, <laughs> it just drives me crazy. And then when I walk in and if I'm carrying my Chanel or if I'm carrying my bag, then they'll be like, oh, hi, how are you? Let me help you. No, I get so irritated. And he tells me, He's like, why do you get mad? Because they are judging you on, on your tattoos. They are judging you on what you look like. And if there's something I cannot stand is when someone judges someone else on, on appearance or whatever it is. And you know what? I know we cannot stop judgment. I get that. I understand that. But it's, it's insane to me because we are all in the same boat. We are all on the same team as the, as a human race. We are all on the same team. And I just think it's so ridiculous that some people will say, Oh, that person there, they have tattoos. You know, they probably went to prison. Really? Seriously. And half the time, some of my tattoos are uh, covered up just because, you know, depending upon what I wear, but the fact that they don't, talk to my husband, the fact that they don't acknowledge him. And then I walk in and you're going to try to kiss my ass. I don't think so. I get so, so irritated. And half the time I give them attitude or I walk right out because I just, I cannot deal with it. And, um, you know, I've, I've, and the funny thing is, is that, uh, back to the whole judgment thing is I have met some people. I know some people that are very well off financially and they are the most, um, they don't flash their money everywhere. They wear um, just a plain t-shirt and slacks and you couldn't tell that they are worth as much as they are in as far as monetary value goes. And they are just very, very simple. Some people like to put how much money they have out there and some people don't. And what's funny to me is that some of these sales associates have no clue that maybe the lady that's draped in uh, Hermes from head to toe is, you know, is up to her eyeballs in debt versus the gentleman who is very simply dressed, you know, has millions and millions in the bank. They have no idea, but they go for what is pleasing to their eye. They're like, oh, this person has all this, you know, all they're draped from head to toe in designer labels. They must have money just because they, <laughs> just because they're draped in that doesn't mean that they can necessarily afford it. You know what I mean? So I just think that, um, you know, and someone had messaged someone had messaged me and they said that they get a lot of negative looks based on how they look, uh, as far as appearance, because they're a little bit on the thicker side. And you know what? I don't care whether you're, whether you're a million pounds or whether you're five pounds, whether you're, whether you're black, white, brown, yellow, red, it shouldn't matter. People shouldn't judge you based on what you look and they should never judge a book by its cover because that is, that is, that is just shitty. And I, I guess before I hate to, to, to be so explicit, but it's just, I can't believe that, you know, we have come so far as the human race. We've, we've, we've start we've embraced so many new things. And when we start doing that, we start judging each other and being so negative towards one another. We go straight back to square one. We, I mean, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. That's why I will never judge someone based on what they look like, because I would hate to someone to judge me on what I look like. You know what I mean? So that's a little bit about more of the judgment. So all in all, don't ever, ever listen. Don't ever let anyone make you feel worse. If you go into a high-end boutique and they just kind of look you up and down, you can either walk out because, you know, if they're going, if they're going to judge you, then the last thing I want is for someone like that to help me out. Um, but like I said, sometimes I give them attitude right back and, um, I just don't deal with it. You guys, you, I mean, always know your self-worth and it doesn't matter if a sales associate works at Hermes, if they work at, um, if they work at Harry Winston, I don't care but you do not judge people on what they look like, uh, or you do not judge people before you get to know them. So sorry, I just had to share that because it, it really, it really resonated with me. And I just thought I would share that. So sorry, I went off on that tangent, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.